Dear Martha, I want to express to you and your family my deepest condolences on the loss of your father. It's hard to think of Worcester County without Al, an American hero in every way. Al has been such an inspiration to those who had the pleasure of knowing him and his wonderful writings. I feel fortunate to have enjoyed his company on numerous occasions, from wonderful Worcester Fire Society dinners to trips to special places such as Norwich, Connecticut, where we admired your great-grandfather's first art museum building. Al was a mentor to many of us, and we are lucky he was able to record so much of his knowledge of Worcester County through his various books and newspaper articles. I always enjoyed my visits to your father's home, where we shared our love of Worcester history. My last visit with your father was just before his 100th birthday. It was, of course, a socially distanced event, where we spoke via phone as I stood outside his picture window. Of course, we had to take a break when I used my smartphone to take the attached photo. One final glimpse of an amazing man whom I so admired and will never forget. Jim. I have so many good memories of times I spent with the Southwicks. I grew up in a house across the road from Southwick Pond, on Crystal Street. It was just one school bus stop from Martha's house, but in rural Leicester, that was a mile away. Martha and I became friends when we met on the bus ride to Leicester Centre School to enter the first grade there. We have been dear friends ever since. Over the years that we attended school together, we were pretty competitive academically, but Martha usually beat me out on our report cards. We were both obsessed with the Beatles and snacking. I enjoyed the hospitality of many suppers at the Southwick's table. Everyone would be engaged in animated, interesting conversations, with laughter accompanying the clinking of the silverware and passing of the dishes. Everyone was warm and kind, especially Albert and Shirley, who showed genuine interest in me, asking me what I thought about this or that. Sometimes Albert and Shirley invited me to join the family for Sunday services at the First Unitarian Church in Worcester. I still remember the doxology. I remember the time Jana played Mary in the Christmas play. 
I think Randy might have been in the play too. One of my favorite memories of Randy was holding tightly to him when he took me for rides on his snowmobile. What a thrill for a little kid. One spring day after school, Martha and her impishly delightful little brother Jason led me down the path behind their house to the back of the Worcester airport. We ran around playing, climbing up and down the grass terraces. We kept slipping because it was wet and muddy there that day. Maybe it was the warm sun or the March wind. We cast aside all our concern for our good school clothes and started slipping and sliding around on purpose. When we got back to the house, laughing and covered in mud, there was so much of the mud in my shoes that Shirley had to scrape it out with a spoon, wondering what to tell my mother. Once in high school, Martha and I made a plan to skip school. And that morning we dodged the school bus and ducked down behind the stone wall across the street from the house, waiting for Albert to leave for work. It was frigid, and we were just about in tears from the cold, when he finally drove off. Into the house we went, where we listened to records and ate cheese dreams and sherbet, and who knows what other things we got up to that day. Probably painted our nails and pined for the boys we were crushing on. In the afternoon, we walked down the path into the woods, where we carved our names into a tree. Martha... Pammy, 1971, skipped school. That tree and the carving was still there decades later, integrated as an unplanned feature of the Pyramid Disc Golf Course. Jason Southwick, proprietor. Another memory, years later. Martha and I were adults, but we didn't always act like it. One afternoon, Martha, sporting a beaming, mischievous smile, invited Al and Shirley to watch a movie with us on the VCR. They were happy to. Little did they know, the movie Martha was curating that day was the Rocky Horror Picture Show. You should have seen their faces. Bless their hearts, they hung in there and watched that entire outrageous film. For those unfamiliar with the Rocky Horror Picture Show, imagine a movie with a threadbare plot and a bunch of crazy transvestite aliens running around while breaking into song al and shirley were as mortified as we expected them to be and martha and i laughed about that prank for years these are just a few memories with albert b and the southwicks i thank all of the southwicks including naomi s the late shirley and the late aunt anne for being good friends to me then now and always, Pammy. Albert Southwick was a prolific producer of words. He had a long career as an editorial writer for the Worcester Telegram and the Evening Gazette, retiring in 1985. Even before retirement, he had authored a small book titled The Journals of Stephen C. Earle, 
1853 to 1858, published in the mid-1970s. He probably began work on the second and best known of his books, Once Told Tales of Worcester County, around the time of his retirement. Its popularity inspired him to write more Once Told Tales of Worcester County, and he narrowed his historical focus in the book 150 Years of Worcester. His less well-known books in the early post-retirement period were The Worcester Club at 100 Years and The Johnson Family of Hyde Park and Sag Harbor. He frequently wrote columns for local publications in these years, including for the Worcester Telegram, who were still publishing his work until very close to his final months at age 100. In his 90s, with the help of his son Jason and daughter Martha, Al Southwick published some collections of his writings using the new print-on-demand services available online. Shortly thereafter, Martha began collaborating with Leicester Historical Society member Kenneth Peterson to produce 14 more books, including several more writing collections and three books of new material, edited and designed by Kenneth Peterson. The writing and collections include three volumes of selected writings, four volumes of Down on the Farm articles, four volumes of World War II correspondence between Albert B. Southwick and Maple Hill Farm, a collection of articles from the Middle East in 1967 titled The Wall, a small book titled The Molasses Act, Source of Precedence. In his last three books, he focused on his hometown of Leicester, Leicester Recollections and Leicester Notables were looks at people, places, and events in Leicester history. His final book, Maple Hill History and Memories, focused exclusively on the people and events associated with his childhood home at Maple Hill Farm. In an article published by his alma mater, Clark University, shortly after Al's 100th birthday, he summed things up very nicely. He said, I enjoy writing. That's why I do it. Vida eased ABS through his final chapter at 101 Marshall Street. In his own words, he was the king and Vida was the queen. <laughs> 